Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz trumpeter Laura Jurd. She was born and raised in the UK, and in this modern world of jazz, she has been heralded as one of the most creative young musicians to emerge from the UK in recent years. She was chosen as a BBC New Generation artist for 2015 to 17, and her latest CD with her band Dinosaurs 2016's Together as One, and she is one on the rise. So get to know her and dig this interview, my friends. So let's go ahead and start off here. Your latest album is 2016's Dinosaur Together as One. Take me into the studio. Talk to me about the construction of this album. I've been around for quite a few years, six or seven years, and um. I've been writing lots of music for the band as the years have gone by, and this final set of music, well, not final, but this last set of music which we recorded, um, we spent quite some time rehearsing it a few months before we went in the studio, and then also to kind of make it feel bedded in, I suppose, we, we toured it a little bit, did a small mini tour before we went in the recording studio so that... Um, we felt really kind of at home with the material, you know. Yeah, so by the time we were in the studio, it kind of felt like we were playing another gig, you know what I mean? That has to be a pretty good thing, though. It just feels natural. Yeah, um, I definitely... I, I'd never done that before in a recording, like, gig the music before taking it to the studio, but it's something I'll definitely do again, I think, with, especially with this kind of music, where it's a real... A lot of it's about the energy of the band, you know, so. Right on. So let me ask you this. You were born and raised in the UK. Talk to me about how you got into jazz. Why was it the trumpet? Why jazz? Give me a little bit of your childhood, so to speak. Yeah, sure. Um, I started learning the piano when I was about five. Um, we had a piano in the house where I grew up, and I used to love to improvise on it and play it. So my parents recognized that I perhaps, like, be really into music so I started having some piano lessons at an early age and then when I got to school when I was pretty young I started learning trumpet um yeah someone came into my school and started teaching brass lessons in a group situation so I started doing that and yeah I think because I love to improvise a lot of my early music teachers recognized that I would perhaps be into jazz music so I just started to get introduced to, yeah, various artists and musicians and albums and, yeah, I loved it, really, from, from the moment I kind of discovered music. Now, what jazz albums or musicians really swayed you and influenced you? Um, well, I remember being in a youth band when I was young and it sounds a bit of a cliche and an obvious one, but I, somebody mentioned Miles Davis to me. And so I, I I went and checked out uh, an album of his, and it ended up being, yeah, one of the most famous jazz records of all time. But I, I bought Kind of Blue um, by Miles Davis. Um, yeah, and I I was really taken by the music. I, I think maybe I didn't quite fully recognize how brilliant that album was until I was a bit older. But um, yeah, from 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 that. From that point on, I just started to buy albums of some of the, you know, side men on on that album, like like John Coltrane, and and, and I discovered other trumpet players. Um, I I also really liked Chet Baker's trumpet playing of the kind of American lineage and Freddie Hubbard and people like that. So I just yeah started buying lots of records, and as I got older, I started to be into quite a few European artists as well. Um, I'll check out artists on the ECM record label. Um, yeah, and a lot of my teachers um, in sort of higher education switched me on to a lot of other music as well, um, classical music and rock and pop music, so yeah. Speaking of teachers, that's a perfect so segue for me. What has been some of the best advice that you've ever gotten that you remember to this day about being a musician from a teacher? One of the greatest things, like, best piece of advice I think I got from teachers, or a specific teacher actually, was just that thing of um, always remaining curious and inquisitive about the art form. And, um, yeah, and I think following the, the, the things that you love and finding out as much as you can about them and 
You know, the one thing that is very clear in your bio and your trajectory in your career is that you're one of the most creative young musicians in the UK. You got the BBC New Generation Artist for 2015 to 17. You're obviously on the up and up, you got a new album out. How do you feel about your career right now and, and up to this point? Yeah, um, well, I feel extremely lucky that, um, you know, I've got so many opportunities as a trumpet player and a band leader and a composer, really, um, at this early age. Um, I had a great time studying um, music at college, and um, there I met lots of fantastic musicians who I think I've probably established, you know, lifelong musical relationships with. Um, yeah, and I'm just completely, yeah, completely grateful for everything, really. Um, yeah, and I'm just enjoying it, you know, having a really beautiful time and, you know, making as much music as I can, really. Yeah. You know, the one thing about jazz is that you have conversations on stage, and every every time you get on stage, you get the chance to do it. But there seems to be a theme with a lot of musicians. They have kind of a, a, a conversation they typically have on stage. What kind of conversation do you like to have? Well, I definitely in my band, Dinosaur, one of the... I think we like to keep things very open and really kind of honest, and also, like, ha having fun in fun is a big part of the music we play and we want it to hopefully that's infectious and something that is felt by the audience but we definitely we, well we definitely have such a great time playing with one another um and hopefully that communicates to the audience really that's, that's a big important part of the music i think for me so who would you consider your jazz heroes wow jazz heroes um well, of the kind of, uh, you know, sort of greats and the masters of the tradition, I, I love, um, yeah, Miles Davis, um, Keith Jarrett, I'm really into a lot of Keith Jarrett playing. And then I, I really love um, artists like this uh, Norwegian saxophone player called Trixie Fines, who I really love. And other trumpet players I like, uh, there's this Italian guy called Enrico Rav. Um, I, I love him because he's one of these musicians who constantly makes things, you know, he, he brings out albums very regularly and he's, he's been doing so for a long time. I, I kind of love artists that, like, never stop going, you know. I think that's really a really admirable quality. Um, and, yeah, there's a... Uh, school of musicians in the UK that I, I really love. Um, it's a guy, maybe you know this composer and pianist, Django Bates. Um, he was a very important uh, composer and improviser around in the 80s when he was about my age and from a compositional and improvising point of view, that's me. Right on. Let me ask you this, as a practitioner of jazz music, why do you love jazz? Uh, I think I love... Uh, the, how, just how expressive it is, you know, the, the improvisational quality of it. Um, I love, um, yeah, being able to, you know, each performance, say, you're in dialogue with the other musicians on the stage and it's different every time. And, um, yeah, I love the inventiveness and the, just, yeah, that's, it's kind of like pure creativity, which I, I really love. What's one of the nicest things a fan has ever said to you about your music? Somebody said this thing um, recently when they when they heard the band, which I really I really loved, and it was that um, listening to this band made them fall in love with music all over again, which is which is so nice, you know. <laughs> yeah. A nice thing to say. That is great. What What was it like the first time you ever gave your autograph out? Oh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that too much. Uh, <laughs> I guess it was just nice. Um, I, I think I understand that because I always ask for even people I know. I ask for autographs sometimes. Nice. It's nice to have a little personal connection. If you buy an album and you ask, ask someone to sign it, it's nice to have a personal connection with that person. So yeah, I guess it's a nice honour. 
So let's say we talk in 10 years and I ask you what's going on. Everything's like cause I mentioned before. You got a BBC New Generation artist for 15, 17. You got a lot going on. What are you going to want to tell me has happened in the last 10 years? What are you looking forward to? Um, well, I'd like to think that, I mean, who knows in what guys, but I'd like to think that I've been continuing doing lots of different uh, projects. And, and my band, Dinosaur, I'm, you know, who knows, but I, I very much imagine we'll still be playing together then. Um, you know, it feels really great. I don't see us stopping any time. I uh, think the music will sound completely different, which is something which hope will happen naturally, I guess. But, uh, yeah, be, I'm very intrigued myself to see what the music will sound like in 10 years' time. But I mean, it was still the same sense of uh, excitement and fun and, yeah. So everything's going to come down to this final question I got for you here, and it's this. Everyone has a version of who you are, your family, your friends, your fans. But when you wake up and face the world, who do you think you are? Wow. Um, uh, wow, without wanting to give a strange answer to that, to that question, I guess I just think I'm just another one of the seven people on the planet and trying to, in whatever way I can, make the world a better place. And I guess for me, that's the truth, making music. I like that. That's a great way to kind of wrap everything up. Laura, thank you for taking a little time out to talk to me about your new album and your life. I appreciate it. Oh, super. No worries. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in America, the UK, and around the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Laura for her music and all of those stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store or visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.